Hello, I'm Eric Kazarian, a professor of head and neck surgery at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA and past president of the International Surgical Sleep Society, the world's primary organization dedicated to sleep surgery. I have spent my entire career in this field, focusing on the surgical evaluation and treatment of snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. I'm delighted to share our approach at UCLA Health to sleep apnea and snoring surgery. Why would someone think about sleep surgery? It turns out that surgery may be an option if you have significant snoring or a medical condition called obstructive sleep apnea. Most people have been kept awake at night by the sound of someone else's snoring. Snoring is just that, a sound caused by vibration of structures inside the throat. Obstructive sleep apnea is a more serious condition that often involves snoring, but also includes blockage of breathing that can cause health problems and can prevent you from getting good, deep, restful sleep, leaving you tired and unable to function well during the day. Surgery is not the first line treatment for these conditions. However, you may want to consider surgery if you have not seen improvement with non-surgical treatment. This includes conservative approaches like weight loss, avoiding sleeping on your back, and avoiding alcohol or other sedatives before bedtime, as well as CPAP, or continuous positive airway pressure therapy that is used with sleep apnea. Breathing during sleep ideally occurs with air moving through the nose and the throat and into the lungs. In snoring and sleep apnea, the pathway is not as open as it could be. For surgery to be effective, we must address the area or areas that are blocking breathing in each individual patient almost as if we are treating the breathing pathway like a plumbing or an engineering problem. This makes our evaluation of the anatomy, the physical cause of the sleep apnea or snoring, so important. We at UCLA Health are recognized around the world for our expertise in evaluation called drug-induced sleep endoscopy. This involves going to the operating room where the patient receives sedation and drifts off, almost like they are taking a nap. We then use a thin, flexible telescope to look inside their throat to see what is causing the blockage of breathing, as that points us to the type of treatment that we might want to consider. We have been performing drug-induced sleep endoscopy for decades, and in fact, with some European colleagues, well over a decade ago, I developed the Vogue classification that is used around the world to describe the findings of drug-induced sleep endoscopy. If a picture is worth a thousand words, and hopefully some videos are worth even more, here are some example videos from drug-induced sleep endoscopy exams reflecting the variety of findings that we may see in different patients. This variety is the reason we use drug-induced sleep endoscopy in the first place and have been leaders in this area for decades. Our research has included collaboration with centers from around the world in studies showing how we can use the findings of drug-induced sleep endoscopy to develop a treatment plan tailored to each patient. In terms of treatment plans, when we think about surgery, in contrast to what many people, including some surgeons, think, sleep surgery is not one size fits all. We use a wide array of procedures to treat the palate region, shown with procedures there on the left side, the tongue region, which is this group of procedures on the upper right, or a combination of the two. Careful patient evaluation is essential so that we can match the cause of a patient's sleep apnea or snoring with the procedure or combination therapy that is right for them. One approach that received much attention over the past decade is the upper airway stimulation technology from Inspire Medical Systems. This is a fully implanted system that involves surgery to place three components inside the body, at least in its current form. There is a pulse generator placed in the upper chest on top of the pec muscle with two wires that are connected to it. One of them is a sensing lead that senses breathing patterns from its location in the chest and we expect that this will soon not be required because the generator has been redesigned to do this itself. The stimulation lead connects the generator with a nerve in the neck called the hypoglossal nerve that controls tongue movement. The patient then uses the sleep remote to turn the system on at night when they go to bed so that the generator can function somewhat like a tongue pacemaker, delivering mild stimulation to the hypoglossal nerve to move the tongue forward every time the patient breathes in. Although there are many surgeons and practices that have come on board to offer Inspire therapy over time, we have quite a bit of experience with this. It turns out that I was the first surgeon in the Western US to offer Inspire therapy after their FDA approval in 2014. 
I've also led the largest study examining how drug-induced sleep endoscopy can identify the best candidates for this treatment, research that we and others use in taking care of patients. At UCLA Health, we take care of straightforward cases, but also some of the most challenging cases based on this work. If you are considering surgery for snoring or obstructive sleep apnea, we are here for you. We are international leaders in sleep surgery, and this is based on a combination of our expertise in patient evaluation and procedure selection, our work with new procedures and technologies, and our substantial experience specifically in sleep surgery. We conduct innovative research focused on clinical questions and clinical care using scientific evaluation to improve outcomes. We believe in personalized sleep surgery, finding the right treatment for each patient. This comes from our commitment to evidence-based care that combines research, our experience, and your preferences as a patient.